Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again. This is part two in a series of videos called Building a Markdown Blog with React. And in this tutorial series, we're building basically a Markdown Blog with React. We're just not using um, a platform like Gatsby. What we're actually doing is we're taking the blog content and we're handling the transformation of content to data ourselves. And then once we turn it into the data that we um, want, we can use the data that we have stored to dynamically create blog post pages. What will happen is our data will ultimately be stored as an array of JavaScript objects where each object holds the blog post uh, information like the title, the author, and the content. And like I said, we can loop over that array and then we can dynamically display data using a blog post uh, template uh, in our React files. So for now, let's go back to our project. Look at the getposts.js file. Recall that what we did was we looked in the directory that held our blog content, which was the content directory in our source folder. And then for each file in that directory, we open the file and the content of the file was parsed in such a way that allowed us to extract the metadata, which was, remember, the title, the author's name, the date the blog post was published. And also we were able to extract the content and then separately save those values to a JavaScript post object that we created. And then we pushed each JavaScript post object, which represents <clears throat> excuse me, a blog post, and we pushed each one of those posts to a post list, which is an array that we defined up here at the top. And when we ran our server code, recall our uh, script for running it was npm run server, we saw those two objects within an array. Right? Each blog post was represented as an object. Also recall that it took some time for the execution of this code to happen, so we used a set timeout function before we tried to display our post list. If we didn't do that and we ran our code, we ended up with just an empty array, just like that. Anyway, we're not, well, uh, just a second here, put that back. Uh, there are two things. This time around, I decided that rather than using two files, I was going to use two files in my public directory. I was going to export this get posts function to another file and then call it there. Rather than do that, I just want to use one file because ultimately I'm going to keep the code that I use to write the JSON file where we store our data object within this function get posts. So I want to just call the only file I'm using main.js. So if you can go into your public folder and rename the get posts file as main.js. Now, uh, of course, if you try to run the server, you're going to get an error because we haven't updated our uh, package.json scripts. So we'll need to go do that. Okay, now if we run our server, we should see that post list array. And there it is. Good. All right. So now we won't need this. You can get rid of that. But since we've defined a function, we generally like to have it have some kind of like have a return statement. So put that in there. We won't return anything. Well, the important stuff we're doing is happening up here. Also, since we're not exporting this and we're not really worried about what's going on outside of this function, uh, we don't really need to worry about this. We don't. We only have really one thing that's happening, so we don't need to worry about making it an asynchronous function. Okay. Now recall down here where we push our, our we pushed our JavaScript objects to the post list data array. If we just printed out what was going on, printed out the post list as it is at the end of an individual iteration, 
you'll see that we're printing out the post list too many times. Right? We print it out one time for the first iteration, and then we print it out. Sorry. Where are we here? <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting confused. Let me just clear all this out. And let's do that again. All right, good. So what we're doing is we're printing it out one time at, at the end of the first iteration, and then we're printing out the post list one more time at the end of the second iteration. So we don't want to do that. We just want to have um, whatever code we're going to put here. We only want to have it execute one time. So what I can do is... I can just use the number of files that are in the directory as a sort of stopping point, and that's given by files.length. Right? So if we said console.log right, files.length, that would be the number of the files in the directory, right, which we see are two. Right, and if you need more proof, you can just say, there are right, and you can run it again. Very good. So there are two files in the content directory. So the index of the last file would be one. Right, since we start at zero. So we can use that to make sure that we only do what we are going to do here one time. Right, and now I'm just testing it using a, a print statement. So I can put in a little bit of logic here. I can say if uh, i, i is the index that we set up up here. We're saying each file has an index assigned to it. So if the file index is equal to files.length and minus one, recall, because files.length would be two, but we only want the index of the last file, which would be one in this case. Or if we had three files, then we would want the index of the last file, and that would be two. So we always have to subtract that one. Right, and we're saying, if that's the case, if we're actually at the last file in the folder, then we'll want to do our, our thing. In this case, we're just logging that post list to the console. So now we can see that we've only written the post list one time. Right? And that's got the two files in it. But of course, we're not concerned with just writing the post list or logging the post list to the console. We actually want to write, a, write this um, post data to, or the post information to a JSON file, right? which I'm going to call posts.json. So first what we need to do is we need to stringify our content, our post list. So let's define a variable called data. And let's stringify that post list. And then we'll take that and we'll write it to our, J we'll add it to our JSON file that we're going to create. So we'll use fs, write file sync, and now we need to decide where we're going to put this file. So I want to put it in the source folder. And remember, I want to call it posts.json. Well, I want to call it posts, and it is a JSON file. And then we're going to add our data to that file. Right. Now, we wouldn't want to keep writing the file after at the end of every iteration, that's why we put this conditional in here. 
Okay, so if we run our code now, let me just clear everything out. If we run our code now, we should see that file with our data in it as an array. Okay, so we see this post.json file has appeared in our source folder. And we do have it. We have this array of two JavaScript objects. And we'll be able to iterate over this array later to grab our uh, blog post information and display it dynamically. So was there anything else that I wanted to include in this video? I think that was everything. So hopefully uh, now you've got a, a better idea of how we're going to deal with turning our blog post content into data. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll actually display it dynamically using React. So as always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon. Cheers.